to our webinar here about the International Master Program in Comparative Social Research at the Higher School of Economics. My name is Christian Fröhlich, and I'm the academic supervisor of this program. I personally am uh, not a Russian, I'm uh, a German. I graduated and uh, defended my PhD thesis in Leipzig, one of the oldest uh, universities in Germany. And then I kind of <laughs> landed here in Moscow, and I'm now heading this wonderful, interesting, and inspiring master's program. I now uh, would like to use the opportunity to introduce you to this master program. I will kind of um, yeah, present the main traits of the program, and then you have always the possibility to pose your questions in the ch chat section. Um, and I will uh, answer them uh, after my, my introductory uh, talk then. All right, uh, comparative social research is one of, uh, I guess, five um, master programs at the School of Sociology at the Higher School of Economics, but we are the youngest program. And we differ in uh, you know, several respects uh, to the other, you know, vis a vis the other programs. And uh, yeah, we'll come to that, but um, maybe the, the main or two of the main differences is that our uh, program is truly international in terms of teaching staff, uh, students, and the activities of our students um, um, kind of, um, yeah, um, have the possibility to do uh, during their two-year studies. And the other uh, difference um, is that our master program is um, dedicated to empirical research and therefore has a lot of uh, connections and interrelations with research centers, uh, in particular uh, with a big uh, the national research laboratory at the higher school economics, but more about this um, in, a, in a second. Let me start off with uh, some thoughts about why uh, we uh, have chosen uh, this topic. Yeah? Um, many, you know, most programs usually have a, have a, a topic hinting at some uh, uh, subject or, or object of study or something, yeah? like institutional analysis or public sociology, yeah? or, two of the other master's programs at, uh, at the higher school. Um, we uh, uh, concentrate on comparative social research um, because we believe, and this is not just our belief, we're just like followers of, uh, of a, a strong belief in the tradition of sociology uh, that uh, comparison, uh, comparison as a method is uh, yeah, the core of sociology and its logical thought and, uh, and, and research. And here, just to uh, brought to um, uh, people here to, as evidence. This is not just thought up. Uh, I hope uh, some of you know here the uh, uh, the one on the I know, uh, on the old photograph, um, the black white photograph, uh, Emil Durkheim, uh, one of the founding fathers of uh, modern sociology. Um, he already kind of you know, he passes this just a key reference here, who is uh, that a comparison uh, is kind of the key method, the core. Uh, operation uh, for, for sociology, not just like that because kind of it makes more fun. No, uh, it's because uh, by comparing uh, objects of study uh, and cases, and, and he um, uh, called them often uh, social, uh, social, um, social, social facts, um, only by comparing uh, what we you know, analyze phenomena in so our social reality, we actually can aim for a kind of a, a general uh, knowledge about social reality. Uh, so this is this is taken uh, from natural sciences, of course, yeah, where they also kind of uh, compare the results of the experiments in order to have general knowledge. Uh, taking over to uh, sociology, it does not mean that only statistical analysis is the is the one way to 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 the truth, but it means that uh, not just by looking at one aspect or one phenomena we can generalize, but we always kind of have to strive at least. Uh, to compare certain aspects of social reality, and how is that important? Why is it actually important for us as social uh, as scientists? No, we're not sit sitting in the uh, in the high tower and just doing this for ourselves. Uh, but uh, social science, of course, always strives to contribute something uh, to, to to social reality, give something back, some in, yeah, induce. Um, uh, some noise production uh, useful for uh, social development. And here we are, I have the second uh, uh, kind of uh, um, godfather, maybe even uh, of, of uh, current, very modern uh, sociology, Roland Ingelhardt here. On the other hand, uh, 
Um, you may know him as one of the yeah, main driving forces behind modern uh, modernization theory. Um, and he created and, and started those big uh, um, global surveys about attitudes uh, in the world across countries. And uh, for him, uh, comparison here was, of course, also a core a method in order to gain some general knowledge about how societies evolve, how they differ, how they are similar, um, and why they uh, evolve in a certain way. Um, why is this important? This is important because only then uh, we actually know, when we know somehow a little bit more about how societies evolve, we can know about this only by comparing societies to each other. Yeah? Uh, that we then actually can have some uh, yeah, general knowledge about how politics are working, policies are working, um, how uh, problem solving is working in different contexts and so on. Yeah? So this has uh, a very uh, uh, applied uh, outcome in the end, yeah? um, uh, the, the, the science we are doing here. And, um, so our program is in, in general about investigating yeah, the differences and similarities, of course, uh, between nations and cultures on a very macro level, and but also uh, um, about um, investigating differences between all kinds of social, political, religious, and ethnic groups on all kinds of uh, levels of social reality, uh, major level organizations, for example, institutions, or on micro, micro level uh, about uh, uh, certain groups of uh, society, uh, religious groups, for example, or certain, uh, I don't know, neighborhoods in a city and so on. Yeah? So this is a very broad approach we, we have here to comparison. Yeah? And um, to uh, yeah, give you a little kind of uh, overview here, a little, little uh, taste uh, what our students are working on. Yeah? What, is this, what are the topics our students are working on? Here I have three examples of uh, yeah, three general topics and how our students uh, approach them. They approach them, and this is also an example to give you uh, for showing how um, yeah, we are not fixed on a cer certain method, but always encourage our students to choose the method according to our research questions. Uh, so we are, our students are using uh, quantitative as well as uh, qu qualitative methods. And here you, the first uh, example, for example, about uh, gender and gender differences. You see here um, one student, uh, this is all math thesis topics. Um, um, sh has chosen international comparison of gender differences on the labor market. Clearly, in a uh, uh, quantitative research design using um, yeah, uh, data from a, global, from a global survey, from the World Value Survey here in that case, uh, looking at, um, at the topic across uh, countries. Yeah? Uh, but you always can also uh, look at gender differences on the labor market from a, um, yeah, uh, with a a qualitative research design, and here the second uh, topic, yeah, career paths of women in science, a comparative analysis of Germany and Russia. Here the student took Germany and Russia as two case studies um, and uh, looked at um, how uh, women uh, developed their careers in, uh, in that case, uh, STEM sciences, uh, so the, the technical science, mathematics, physics, and so on. So this was uh, two very interesting uh, and contributing uh, master thesis. Um, which is, uh, so just for, as an example here, how, do, how you uh, can uh, approach um, comparison from different uh, research uh, designs. Yeah? Uh, yeah, the other two topics are similar. Yeah? Um, the, the first here, according academic dishonesty, yeah? a very timely uh, topic um, researched uh, globally, but very um, complicated to approach, actually, as it might uh, um, imagine yeah, the first topic here about attitudes towards academic dishonesties uh, among university students. This was a um, um, statistical analysis of uh, a survey among uh, teachers and students uh, in universities um, in five countries in the world. And the second uh, work was about the comparative analysis of dishonest academic behavior among English and Russian students. You have, again, a qualitative research design looking at two case studies. And here the student um, took interviews with uh, students from uh, English and Russian universities, yeah, looking at how they approach their studies in general, what does uh, studying mean for them, uh, for their life, and how they approach studying in order to understand what then actually the meaning of academic dishonesty is. And this actually differs very much in those two country uh, contexts. So also, again, very contributing topics here. And the last um, example here about um, ethnic, uh, um, different ethnic groups, and all those three, gender, um, academic dishonesty, or education in, in, in a general sense, 
and um, ethnic and ethnic relations are two, you know, three of the main, of the popular, most popular topics among our students uh, to study our program. And here the first um, um, example is about everyday typifications of ethnic groups. Here the student did a survey at one university, it's a very confined uh, 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 empirical field work but um, with a 100% uh, kind of uh, reach out to, to students of a certain uh, subject um, with a survey and then how they actually um, yeah, see each other yeah, according to their uh, ethnic belonging. And this was also very interesting how uh, different ethnic groups uh, yeah, see each other and interpret each other um, and um, use certain stereotypes uh, with each other. And the other, um, yeah, the last example is about the development of religious identity among Lebanese migrants, Lebanese migrants in Moscow. Uh, it seems like not a comparative um, uh, study. That's why I, I took it here as an example. Uh, but um, studying um, how uh, religious identity of Lebanese migrants in Moscow change, uh, the student also uh, looked at uh, Lebanese, uh, Lebanese uh, people in Lebanon. Yeah, uh, in order to grasp that difference uh, before and after the migration. So, uh, in that sense, also a comparison yeah, uh, of uh, two social groups uh, and two social you know, situations, phenomena, and so on. So, this is um, here just to give you an example how broad the research topics of our students are. Yeah. And um, uh, here is some you know, an overview, some facts of our, our program. Um, let me start here with saying that uh, the department of the sociology as a discipline at HSE uh, has a quite high rank um, in the world rankings. Um, uh, sociology the f um, yeah, fall under the top 100 in the world and in the US uh, World Universities rankings already for the second year. So in 2000, um, um, 19 is now uh, the, the, the most recent ranking. We also are in the top 100. And uh, the Times Higher Education ranking, we are in the top 150, I guess. So uh, we are yeah, indeed among the, um, the top um, institutions um, to study and to um, yeah, do sociological uh, research in, in, in the world, just uh, yeah, as a additional information for you guys. Uh, um, other than that, uh, the structure of our program is a two-year master's program, as in many other countries um, as well. Uh, we have a uh, very quite small program, actually, also in comparison to other associated programs here at HSE. We have uh, 15 state budget places for Russian students. That means the students don't have to pay uh, tuition fees um, and get the right to uh, yeah, um, live in the dormitory of HSE for a very, very small symbolic uh, price. Um, but here, unfortunately, I did not add this here in this slide. Uh, we have also five, uh, I mean six this year, um, uh, scholarship places, so tuition waiver uh, for foreign students. Um, and an additional uh, five, sorry, uh, five uh, uh, commercial places for our students. So all in all, 25, maximum 25 uh, students in our program. It's quite, uh, comparatively quite small at HSE. Um, what is uh, different, I already taught, it in, um, taught in the beginning that our program is indeed international and, um, and also we have that um, now kind of in, integrated in our structure as well. Our students have the opportunity to uh, earn a second degree. So students have to um, you know, they earn their the Russian degree in any case, um, but they also can participate in two, one of two, one of two a double degree tracks. Um, I will talk uh, about this uh, in, in, in a second. Um, and earn a German or a, a French degree in addition. Um, for all obligatory in our program uh, is uh, to, uh, uh, to undergo a research internship. And here the focus lies on research. Yeah? Um, so our students. Um, um, either in Russia, in Moscow, or in other Russian cities, or abroad, um, uh, engage in an academic uh, environment. Uh, it's not necessary to do this on, at a university, but in some kind of academic environment, um, at least uh, 10 weeks. But I come to that uh, as well. And um, what is also unique to our program, we always try to in, in, uh, engage our students from the very first semester um, into um, actual research projects. So our the teachers in our program, yeah, they are always seeking and are ready to involve 
uh, our students into their um, projects from the very uh, beginning. For example, in my case, I have already have now currently six students in uh, in um, in three international comparative projects. They are all uh, qualitative in their research design. And uh, yeah, instruction is fully in English. Everything is in English. Classroom is in English, uh, but also the uh, communication with our manager uh, and with me is all in uh, all in English. Um, and of course, we have many international uh, lectures in our program, not only Russians and uh, internationals. And uh, what is also I'm very proud of, of uh, the fact that our program offers a lot of uh, guest lectures and workshops additionally, uh, extracurricular, um, for our students uh, by invited guest lecturers. Um, um, we have an international seminar series at HSE, uh, Department of Sociology, and also from other contexts. People are coming to HSE for a short period of time, and they, in um, almost all cases, give an additional lecture or workshop to our students, and that means our students have the opportunity to uh, yeah, develop an international uh, network uh, already during their studies. Here, a little glimpse at the uh, yeah, structure of our program. Um, unique in our case is also that all the teaching, yeah, all the studying in your case, uh, is um, kind of concentrated in the first year. This is different from other master programs, who also require studying in the second study year, at least in the third semester. Um, here you see models one and two, and model three and four. We have the American model here a little bit. Yeah? Um, so semesters um, are um, you know, uh, cut into two modules. Uh, so the model one and two is semester one, and models three and four are semester uh, two. And um, yeah, we start off, of course, with basic uh, courses, uh, introductions, and not only introductions, um, but uh, it gets more and more advanced on the topical and the methods level uh, in the second uh, semester. And the second year is then kind of free of studying, so it means you can um, be wherever you like to be, uh, whether on an internship uh, abroad, on another Russian city, or uh, on a double degree, um, or a other exchange um, um, a trip uh, wherever in the world. Yeah? So you have the opportunity to do this during the whole second year. Uh, we have even the opportunity, um, we have even the opportunity not to uh, be present in person for your defense. Uh, we had that several times already. People do their internship somewhere abroad, and they get already a job offer. They stay uh, to work there, of course, and then they defend. Uh, they, they submit their thesis electronically, and, and at HSE, uh, many things, actually everything, almost everything works electronically. You can submit this also, your thesis, uh, electronically, um, and then you can defend via Skype um, before the commission, all no problem. So very flexible here in that sense. Um, so in the second year, in the first semester, you go, go either to an internship um, uh, or you go to a double degree. Um, or you um, go abroad um, you know, via a different uh, uh, exchange opportunity um, through the partnership agreements of AUSE in general. Yeah, you also then study a little bit, but also you do your internship. So this is very individually. Uh, in any case, um, the whole individual study plans, um, what comes after the, the first year, so the second year, is it's all kind of in, in your individual project yeah, of uh, how you want to do your research, where you want to do your internship, how you combine this all. We will discuss this with you individually um, and make up a plan. Uh, and step by step, we will support you with our you know, with institutional resource, but also um, our personal networks. Yeah, We will discuss where to go best, what is the best research for your project, what, where does it make sense to go for an internship, and so on. Um, yeah, and continuously over the whole period of time, you have always the opportunity to go for uh, workshops and guest lectures, uh, participate in conferences at HSE or in Moscow. Moscow is a very uh, viral and vital environment for presenting and discussing uh, intellectual, uh, very inspiring atmosphere. Um, here is a little glimpse on the yeah, courses we plan to. Um, yeah, to plan for next year. Uh, you see three columns here, and the first probably is the yeah, maybe for us the most important methods. Um, as you already have probably um, felt, um, topic topic wise, we are not uh, requiring any any limitations uh, except that it should be of course uh, kind of uh, a 
applicable for sociology, so it should be about society in a quite broader sense. Um, but uh, we offer our students the, the tools to do uh, analysis, uh, to do to do studying, um, yeah, in in a, in a direct sense here, to do your own research project, and that's why we offer a, a huge variety of methodological uh, courses, um, uh, yeah, starting with. Uh, with R as a program language, which is quite not so common in most universities, but this is very kind of uh, advanced, but also very kind of accessible because it's yeah, you can uh, customize, customize this a lot to your own uh, needs. Uh, and it goes on to very advanced uh, yeah, explanatory statistical me methods like multi level regression analysis and structural equation modeling. Uh, and social network analysis is also here a very popular uh, course in our in our um, um, plan, and for next year we have also a, a new course on, on big data, introduction to the big data and how to handle big data, yeah, when you analyze like social media networks and other um, huge masses, uh, amounts of, of, of data from, from the internet mostly, of course. Uh, and qualitative comparative analysis is also quite a uh, yeah, new and fashionable me method here, combining qualitative and quantitative approaches to to analysis, um, but that is not to say that we um, are forgetting uh, qualitative uh, research methods. Uh, you have also opportunity to engage in ethnographic methods and, and historical comparative methods um, in our program. And then when it comes to theory or more topic-related uh, courses, you have a, a quite broad range to choose from. Uh, that's um, We always try to give that choice to our students um, more than uh, in other programs. Uh, students can choose from a list we offer and we recommend, but you are also uh, free to choose some other departments and um, institutes where it is kind of uh, related to your research interests. So you have to kind of communicate with me in order to get approval for that, but that is in most cases not, not, not a problem. And then research preparation is for us also very, very important. So the research seminar um, concentrates on how to design your research and also um, looks behind the scenes of academic practice. Yeah? We are discussing, for example, right now in a research seminar, uh, the peer review process for international paper publications and, and other things. Yeah? So this is uh, very important. And uh, the internship uh, has a very um, you know, strong position in our, in our program. Everything kind of goes, uh, is designed to help you to, to do good research uh, doing internship and master thesis. Uh, research. Uh, yeah, speaking of internship, yeah, internship uh, should be research related. So this is uh, our students usually do not uh, do research in, in you know, uh, 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 companies where they kind of do um, project work in, in the broader sense that they have to kind of design something or that they advertise something or something or like that. But they have to handle data, you know, all kinds of data. Is it, Statistical or interview data it doesn't matter, um, and the uh, research um, yeah, internship should be at least ten weeks. So this is quite a long, long time. So you have time to actually do a, a, a bigger, broader project. Uh, but it doesn't matter where you do this. Yeah, you can do this at HSE. A lot of research institutions are at HSE. A lot of laboratories and centers and uh, and so on. Um, or you go somewhere else in Russia. So there are research institutions, good ones in the Petersburg, for example, other other cities. Uh, or you go abroad at all, yeah. So then you go to West. Most of our students then go to um, West European countries. We have close relationships uh, with Tilburg University, where the European Values uh, Study is uh, situated, with its headquarters. And our students, for example, this year, two of our students went there for uh, six months um, to engage at interns, even paid interns, uh, to uh, support them yeah, with their research. Uh, there and they facilitated their own topics as well. Yeah, so they got even supervision for their for their own uh, master thesis. And um, in Berlin, we have a cooperation with the Center for uh, East European International uh, Studies, where our students can engage in, in research projects. Um, and we have also already uh, several experience with uh, the University of Helsinki, namely the Alexanteri Institute there, which is a, is a Russian study, Russia studies. Um, institute well known in the world, and our students engage there in projects as uh, as well. Um, but students go also to kind of uh, big international organizations. Yeah, this year uh, one of our students did her internship in Paris at the headquarters of the OECD. Um, or we had uh, one student a couple of years ago um, going to the UN um, Commission in Latin America. 
So this is all um, yeah, open to your own initiative, I would say. Um, and people actually uh, yeah, um, uh, get there yeah, with, their, with their background, with their topics. It's always very applicable for international organizations as well. Um, yeah, and in the end, uh, kind of an outcome uh, of the uh, uh, internship period is your term paper. So it may, does also mean that it, you write the term paper quite late in the process. Uh, most programs require this at the end of the first year. In our case, you write it uh, and submit this at the end of the third semester, um, uh, which has you know, usually the form of a, of a published, publishable article. Yeah? So you, you have the opportunity already to engage in early publication activities. Um, now, so a couple of words to our double degree tracks. Um, we have uh, two agreements. One is with the Freie University in Berlin, uh, and there, namely with the Institute for East European Studies uh, and their master program. And then the other one is with the um, School for Advanced Studies in Social Sciences, a uh, yeah, globally well known and uh, yeah, appreciated uh, research institution um, in the sphere of social science. They have also an uh, East European. I would say in broad sense, East European Studies uh, Institute, which is quite uh, related, quite heavily related to the uh, sociological department there. And um, so, respectively, all students can earn um, uh, master degrees from there as well. And this is actually uh, yeah, quite uh, effective there because you you get the opportunity to. Um, to earn those two degrees, one of the two degrees, only by being at least one semester there. Yeah, you don't have to study a whole year. And here, in the case of, uh, in, of Berlin, uh, you see already there, you, um, you earn um, at least 30 credits. Uh, not only end, this is 60 credits, but 30 credits by being actually present. And then you write your master thesis in co-supervision. So one supervisor is from HSE, the other one from, from Berlin. You earn the, the rest of the credits that uh, the, uh, another 30 credits uh, by doing your master uh, thesis and engaging in the colloquia and defending it and so on. And uh, Professor Dr. Katharina Blum here is our uh, contact partner, the, the head of the uh, Center for East European Studies there. And um, uh, here you have, of course, you have to study. So this is a liberty. Now it's not the upside, but it's an additional, of course, uh, teaching uh, study load you have to kind of. Uh, uh, kind of uh, yeah, take here, but uh, the uh, the benefit is of course huge. Uh, you get a second uh, yeah, a German degree for this, um, and uh, for Paris it's the same. Um, here you um, engage um, uh, also with the East European Study Center, um, headed by Professor Francois uh, Dossé, um, and here you have a, also a choice of courses uh, to study. Um, and you also need to uh, do your, uh, yeah, in both cases, in Berlin and uh, Paris case, you also have to do your internship, but you can choose whether to do this in Paris and Berlin during your studies or uh, before uh, in, in Moscow before you, before you leave. And here also in the Paris case, you uh, write your master thesis in uh, course supervision. And our uh, yeah, biggest uh, uh, partner in Russia uh, is the Laboratory for Comparative Social Research. The, this master program was founded on the, yeah, in, as, as, a, as a cooperation between the School of Sociology and this, this laboratory. And uh, this laboratory is quite unique. Yeah? This is a, it's a big uh, network uh, of scholars around, uh, around the globe uh, who occasionally engage also in, in, uh, in, uh, in fellowships in, in Moscow. Um, come for, for conferences, workshops, and so on. And here you see the three main figures of that uh, laboratory. Yeah? Here on the right hand, uh, already um, uh, Ronald Ingelhardt, yeah? I told you in the beginning about. Uh, he is the, uh, one of the founding fathers of that um, lab as well, together with the, with the, with the, the men in the background, uh, Eduard Ponarin, uh, a professor from uh, HSE in St. Petersburg, uh, who is the head of this laboratory uh, here in, in in Russia, the middle Christian Welze uh, came to it quite uh, you know, a bit later, but now is the head um, scientific uh, uh, advisor for the for the lab. Um, not less uh, important for comparative uh, research um, using uh, value data. He is the vice president of the World Value 
uh, um, survey association right now. Um, yeah, and uh, this this uh, lab is uh, yeah um, a network of projects. Uh, many people doing projects using uh, using uh, value data from different databases, but uh, almost from the uh, World Value Survey on on a vast uh, range of topics. So here our students always find uh, someone to work with and engage in, in, in the projects or internships. Our students always. Uh, 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 welcome to attend conferences and their workshops and their summer schools. This is a huge opportunity for our students to uh, engage in that network and find themselves uh, supervisors for internships or for, for master's thesis or to then to go on for PhD, PhD opportunities uh, uh, abroad. So this is um, uh, here a unique environment for our, for our students. Here a little glimpse uh, at our uh, staff of uh, core staff, I would say. Of, of lecturers, um, also lecture now uh, for them the most, as you might uh, see from the first glimpse, a very young group of people. Uh, I hope not, not one uh, gray hair, maybe I have no already a little bit gray hair, but uh, otherwise a uh, very innovative, young, dynamic uh, a group of uh, researchers foremost who, who lecture on wonderful topics in our program and uh, come from all over the world, as you see. Uh, here, my, yeah, myself from Germany, but also Lily in the middle here from France, uh, uh, Arnab in, uh, with the <laughs> uh, wavy hair here from, from India, for example, yeah, and our wonderful Russian colleagues uh, make up a, a, yeah, a great inspirational group of, uh, of, of lecturers of many different teaching styles as well. Yeah? Uh, what is great by with international teaching staff is that they all bring their, their experiences, their, their uh, understandings of how to um, uh, do the classroom interesting uh, uh, to us, and this makes it you know, uh, very um, heterogeneous and, and always kind of um, interesting, um, not routine, you know, in our classrooms. Um, uh, here are some uh, guest lecturers, uh, the aforementioned Christian Welzer, of course, but also Hans Peter Krisi. Uh, and uh, and, and others um, who come here um, several times a year and, and lecture, but not just them. Yeah, as I said, we have a lot of uh, in other invited guest lecturers to give workshops and uh, guest lecturers um, at uh, at HSC. But here, Christian Metzel once said, um, yeah, somehow he had the feeling that uh, this polarity, polarity, heterogeneity of our uh, program kind of gives it a, a certain uh, spirit and. Uh, I can just share this opinion, of course, uh, very much um, from my experience in the classroom. Um, I have taught in Germany, I have taught in Russia, so it means uh, to just to German students and uh, just uh, to, um, to Russian students, but having an international classroom is uh, a true uh, experience, uh, an event for every, uh, for every lecture. Yeah? So uh, this comparative approach uh, is inherent in every classroom uh, discussion already of People having so different backgrounds and experiences uh, already. Most of our students have, of course, already research experience from the BA studies, of course, and have very clear, more or less clear, at least, at least they are dedicated already to certain topics, so they are already engaged and have certain knowledge, and um, so that makes it um, uh, super viral, and, and the discussions are always quite, uh, quite uh, kind of serious and uh, going quite deep. Yeah? Um, here's some yeah some citations from our international some of our international graduates here in that case already uh, and they they kind of also kind of um, repeat what I already said from their own words yeah for one uh, the um, kind of uh, combination between uh, theoretical and knowledge we, we teach uh, and the opportunity to do your own research yeah to, in, in empirical research projects and here also Karim for example yeah, he, appreciate it very much as to many of our students and um, that they can do their own research projects so that they are supported uh, with their own research ideas um, and uh, many of our students actually come apply to us because they have that opportunity because they have already their, uh, their, their idea in mind which they want to pursue and, uh, and see the opportunity in our program to actually do that. But what do our graduates, yeah? who are they? And, um, here you, I picked out uh, just four examples here, and you see there. This is heavily they they follow heavily 
academic pathways, right? Uh, one of, for example, here, Kirill's from Estonia, um, who did an internship in, in Tilburg with the European Value Study, uh, um, and with a supervisor there, uh, wrote two academic, wonderful academic papers in the national peer review journals, published them, and then I got a scholarship a PhD position uh, in, at the University of Essex, one of the strongest sociological institutions uh, uh, in the world, and is doing now his PhD there. So this is, of course, an ideal typical uh, pathway here. Uh, but Miguel, on the other hand, um, he just stayed at the place of his internship at the UN uh, Commission in Latin America, and this was, for example, one of those who defended their um, uh, PhD um, master thesis uh, via Skype from, from Chile. Yeah? So this, uh, he got uh, right an offer to stay as a consultant uh, out of his internship uh, engagement. And here Saul and Evgenia, they stayed at HSE. Uh, both are different institutions, but went on in PhD programs at HSE. Just to say here that HSE, uh, starting this year, uh, awards its own um, PhD title. Yeah? So they are not Kandidat uh, Nauk, uh, as it's called here in Russia. But HSE gives out the PhD title uh, in a direct sense of the word. Yeah? So this is also kind of unique in Russia. Uh, not this, this uh, probably have now only elite institutions in Russia. So this, uh, just to say that. Um, and um, yeah, what do our graduates then? In, when the picture is a little bit broader here, because most of our students, I would say, a uh, little more than half of our students go on uh, in academia. Uh, either in Russia, and then they engage mostly in HSE, because HSE is a place to be a social scientist um, uh, in Russia, or they go on abroad. And not just to, here, the example of Kyrgyz to Essex, but also to other um, universities. Our students also got uh, into uh, graduate schools in, uh, in Germany, for example. Um, so this is uh, always uh, yeah, the, a direct option for our students. Um, or they stay um, in Russia, and then they engage into um, into the job market, uh, wherever um, data is analyzed. Yeah? So this is, of course, often in market research, uh, but also in foundations and consulting. Yeah? Um, so we have all students are in McKinsey and PricewaterhouseCoopers and, and, and others, um, but also in think tanks, yeah? especially think tanks uh, are uh, institutions where they kind of have to analyze data in order to kind of uh, give policy recommendations. Yeah? So this is then uh, very applied research, but on the basis of rigorous um, uh, research results, you know, so which, they have of, which they often produce themselves. Uh, and of course, our students um, um, have the chance always to engage into uh, non-governmental organizations on the international level, either uh, based in Russia or, or outside Russia, yeah? that doesn't matter. So the example here of the UN uh, is, is maybe the best. And uh, yeah, so uh, who, sh who should, should apply as always, of course, our, uh, what is the ideal um, uh, picture, uh, image of a student uh, we want to uh, see is, of course, someone who has a strong interest in social science uh, in studying society. Uh, not necessarily um, 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 does that person need to have a background in sociology in particular, yeah? but in social science uh, in a broader sense. So our students are not just from sociology, they might be uh, sometimes up to half of the class or even less, uh, but uh, they come then also from political science, they come from economics, they come from uh, psychology, from history, from linguistics, yeah, cultural studies. Uh, so everything kind of what deals with, uh, with society is, of course, um, uh, what we what we need in the student. So this interest in this in society and the interest to to obtain a so-called sociological imagination. Yeah? Um, and uh, since our student is academically focused, uh, research focused, most of our students have an interest actually, yeah, to obtain an academic career um, or to kind of work with data. Yeah? Um, so we have also some student, one of our recent graduates. Uh, he works in a company who analyzes uh, data from uh, big uh, gamers platforms, yeah? from games, uh, online games, and uh, the behavior of uh, of gamers in the game. And uh, they, of course, have their uh, orders they have to fulfill by maybe market research, but they always have the opportunity to uh, kind of think of their own projects they want to kind of yeah, pursue, yeah? doing doing uh, their work out. So this is also always an there's a broad range of, 
of uh, work profiles here where you work with data. Yeah? Um, and uh, um, yeah, despite what I always said, uh, the work in the national organizations and think tanks. Um, and of course, uh, students and our programs, they have to be open to, to tr truly at the national atmosphere. Yeah? So they have to be open to work together with um, students from all over the world and from, with lecturers from all over. Uh, applying to our program is quite easy, actually. Uh, you don't have to pass any exam or something. Uh, you have just to uh, send in uh, electronically or by post, but uh, better electronically via the HSE application uh, website, uh, your portfolio. You know, the portfolio consists here of a CV. Uh, here you have to be, of course, as specific as possible. Um, and what is very important is the motivation letter and the research statement. The motivation letter, um, both short documents, yeah? uh, no need to write um, uh, books, but uh, the motivation should contain, of course, discuss somehow why you are interested in comparative uh, uh, social research, why is this important to you, uh, why is our program important to you, uh, what um, kind of career plans have you, um, and where do you find this is important uh, for you to study comparative social research. Uh, and the research statement should also contain uh, some thoughts, uh, first experience you have already, what kind of topics have you researched and what kind of methods have you used, but also what kind of ideas do you have right now when writing this for uh, future research during, the, uh, during your study. So this is not, of course, uh, no promise you have to make, uh, but uh, we want to see, do you have ideas? Yeah? Um, what kind of ideas do you have? And uh, recommendation letters are, of course, always um, important. Uh, ideally, two, ideally two in English language. Um, this is uh, why, why important, because um, um, English language, of course, our selection committee is comprised of international colleagues, not just Russian. Um, and uh, they, these letters, they have, they kind of evaluate you, uh, how you are in class, how you, what are your activities, are kind of a, uh, yeah, a different, opinion about you. Uh, this is always important. If you don't have the opportunity to get one in English but only in Russian, uh, so be it. Yeah, better to send one than not to send one. Yeah? So this is, in uh, uh, any case, um, important recommendation letter. Uh, and of course, your transcripts of uh, the BA studies, um, if you have, um, but in any case, you have transcripts. You don't have the diploma, you have a decent transcript. So we see what kind of courses have you studied and how well. Um, always important is the, uh, some kind of evidence for your English language skills. Uh, and you can give that evidence by uh, sending in an English uh, certificate, so from, from kind of TOEFL or Cambridge or whatever, um, uh, from, from the last um, two years. Or if you don't have such, you don't have to do such uh, exam just for applying to our program, if you don't have a certificate, we will just indicate it, please, and then we will have a Skype interview with you, um, a short interview, so you can, um, yeah, we can talk to you and see what, how are your skills. So you see, for Russian applicants, um, for scholarship places, uh, the application period is still open until July 31st. Um, the, for, international for international students, for international students who want to obtain a tuition waiver scholarship, they have to hurry uh, the application but then it's here the end of uh, March, first of, first of April, April, I guess. Um, commercial applications, of course, um, are possible until July 31st in any case. Um, yeah, and if you have uh, questions, you can now post them in the, uh, in the chat and I will answer them. Or uh, you write an email uh, to me here, Christian Fröhlich, or to our program coordinator, Ekaterina uh, Shekina, and we will answer you via, via email. So I hope you uh, heard something interesting here. Um, thank you for, uh, for tuning in. And now I turn to our uh, questions. We have uh, some of them here. Um, one question is how our program is different from cultural anthropology. Um, I mean, uh, cultural anthropology um, is certainly a topic or a, a direction of, uh, of research you can pursue in our program. Uh, as long as it has, has a comparative uh, aspect. Yeah? So all, our students also use ethnographic methods, um, come even from, from anthropology and pursue their 
uh, their topics, but they have to uh, adapt a comparative approach. It's the only requirement here uh, uh, we have. So in that case, um, the cultural anthropologist does not have to uh, change uh, too much yeah, in order to get our uh, diploma. Um, and the second question is here, what makes a good portfolio? Um, and does the participation in student conferences count? Um, a good portfolio um, is always a portfolio where we have, to, when reading it, and when, when reviewing it, we have the feeling that you wrote this uh, uh, directly to us in our program. Yeah? Uh, and you might not agree, but um, that this can be kind of seen or, uh, yeah. Uh, but you, uh, if you read a lot of uh, por por um, portfolios over the years, you uh, immediately see if a portfolio is, is a standard portfolio which, student, um, which the student sends out to whatever university all over the world, or if this uh, portfolio is customized uh, for applying to a specific program. Uh, that means, um, as I said already, the motivation letter addresses directly our program and our approach of the program, namely here comparison. Why is that important? Engages in discussing why is comparison, uh, comparative social research important for you? And why and what from, from what you know about the program, uh, what features are important for your professional career or how do you perceive them as important for a professional career? And also um, a good portfolio uh, contains a research statement uh, which poses, um, yeah, discusses pre previous research experience, but also and foremost um, engages in presenting or discussing own ideas for future research and how, why are they important. Yeah? Um, when it comes to CV, yeah, what, you, what you have done in the past, conference participation of course uh, counts uh, as does uh, publications you have. Um, are they a student conferences or not? Um, of course, there's a difference. If you have participated in a, in a general conference or even abroad, that counts more than a, a student conference in some regional Russian uh, city. Uh, it still counts. It's still great and it still is uh, more than most of students uh, do uh, during their studies. Uh, but of course, there's a, there's a gradual difference. But if you attended a student conference, of course, put that into your CV together with the title of your paper. Yeah, that we know what you exactly have presented there. Um, all right. Uh, if you have more questions, please post them now. There are no more in the in the chat room right now. As I said, of course, always a lot of information to take in. If you uh, have questions pop up in, them, in your mind later today or whenever next couple of days, please write an email. Uh, is there any form of CV to follow, uh, some kind of pattern? The form of CV uh, is, is free. You choose whatever design you feel comfortable with. Um, of course, uh, certain key information uh, it should contain, of course, about your previous education, <coughs> about um, conference participation or publications, if you have any, of course, about um, engagement into research projects, not just your student projects. You, some students uh, list their student projects. And this is indeed interesting, but it belongs more into the research statement. Um, uh, if you have participated in some kind of general research project with, with your teachers, yeah, if they have uh, funded research projects, or you have been a research assistant, or so, uh, what, a fellow, or, uh, or you have been a teaching assistant, yeah, all those kinds of engagements into general faculty activities in your university. Uh, that counts a lot, of course. Please put that in. Um, also, extracurricular activities. If you have been, I don't know, engaged into international activities, uh, helping, uh, supporting international students um, uh, in your, in, at your university, or have you been abroad for an exchange, or have you been in a, um, um, active in volunteering activities abroad, yeah? work and travel in the US, or some kind of uh, whatever, uh, if, uh, a young people uh, council or whatever, simulation of the EU, EU com commission or those kind of things uh, abroad somewhere or in Russia, all those kind of activities uh, where you engage with an international uh, kind of context, uh, please put that in. It's of course, for us, 
as an international program, very important to know what kind of experience you have internationally. Yeah? What kind of uh, language skills do you have? Yeah? What kind of uh, things you have done already? Yeah? Also outside the classroom. This is very um, uh, important as well. Uh, another question we have now here, and uh, if the internship has uh, has to be uh, directly connected uh, to the master thesis, um, yes, but this is not a requirement. It's not a formal requirement. But what we always advise our students is uh, to choose uh, um, the, your internship in a way that it contributes to your master thesis, because uh, you have. Um, uh, less time maybe than other in other programs to do your master thesis research. Um, um, that's why most of our students try to combine this and make sense. Yeah, to to um, do your empirical field work, for example, or some kind of theoretical engagement with your master thesis during your internship period. That's why also um, you have to um, come up. And define your uh, master thesis topic quite early. Yeah? So our students, for example, in in spring right now, on the first study year, or at least until summer at the latest, at the at the end of uh, the first study year, in, as a student in our program, you know your master thesis topic and you know your research design already. And um, so we make sure, yeah, by working with you in a research seminar or individually. And uh, you have also your uh, academic supervisor already and everything. So that means um, we will engage with you in um, t tailoring um, your your internship uh, according to the needs uh, of your master thesis research. That's the ideal thing. Of course, there are cases when uh, students, we have often very kind of active students, they engage in many different research projects. They have different ideas and, and motivations and everything. So they have they want to do master thesis research into one direction, but they are also engaged in some laboratory or other research project, and they want to follow up on this as well. So they then do uh, different things yeah, during the internship and the master thesis research. But that depends on your capacities, of course. Um, uh, or the best students in our program, they get additional scholarships for, for their scientific activities from the Russian state. They might even be um, scholarship holders from uh, several foundations in Russia to get uh, additional scholarships. So they don't have to work during their studies. But um, many students as well, at least a third of our class, always uh, works um, during daytime um, in half of full-time jobs in order to finance their their living uh, costs in, in Moscow, and um, of course they don't have so much time yeah, to on their hands to do so much additional uh, additional work, and they, they still get a good diploma and to write a good master thesis, but they have to be more efficient, and then of course for them it makes sense to tailor the internship according to their master thesis. All right, if there are no more uh, questions right now, please again write to me or to uh, our ma program manager. Uh, we will answer. And um, otherwise, thank you very much for your uh, attention and have a nice evening.